I think there's room in the middle for opinionated Linux distributions. Mm -hmm. It's not even distribution. I, I don't even know what word to use. I, I, let's call it a remix. Yeah. Opinionated <laughs> remix. Linux remixes. Yeah. Welcome back. The reason why you have just saw this clip in the, uh, well, before the intro is because the dude said remix, and this is very important for this video. Uh, so before I get back to this point, I wish to talk a little bit about uh, who I think Omar is for, and I would like to know what you think about that. Recently, I have been a guest on someone else's, um, you know, a show, the the like an interview on another YouTube channel. Uh, I am going to well link it somewhere on the screen, uh, so you can check it out. But in general, uh, the question I got while doing that interview was what I think about Omarchi and. Uh, Let's add to that the fact that for the past few weeks, a lot of people are continuously asking me, my friends included, like in real life friends, why am I not covering Omarchi? How come I am not a part of the hype train? Why am I not farming the views? Um, well, I think that kind of answers it, right? Um, I will talk about this in a separate video as this is a little bit of a separate topic, uh, but suffice to say, I kind of don't want to, you know, I, I want to do the content that I want to do, you know, uh, but since everyone is kind of bombarding me with the current hype, uh, well, let's farm it. So who do I think Omarchi is for? A spoiler alert, nobody. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, so at one side, you have people who wish to use their computer in order to do something. Let's say some work. Uh, for these people, th this is one kind of Linux users. Um, for these people, usually Debian would be the number one choice or something along the lines of a stable distribution uh, that kind of works today as it worked yesterday. Uh, this is kind of one of my mantras uh, that I keep repeating, but I think that uh, rounds it up pretty well uh, in the way that um, I, I tend to describe these people and one of them would be me uh, and my need to do uh, YouTube and you know content creation because the, the PC that I use uh, it must be always available and ready for me to do my bidding. Like if I tell it we are going to record right now, it must be ready right now. It cannot have any changes since yesterday to today. Uh, new SDL versions, new libraries, new uh, something and uh, well, it's no longer working as it used to. So now I have to deal with that first before I do the actual work. That's not good. Then you have a complete opposite kind of Linux users, uh, which are also equally legit and uh, valuable. Um, let, let's call them hackers. And by hackers, I don't mean like the real hackers who who will hack your computer. And uh, I mean about good stuff, not, not uh, the, the bad people. Um, what I mean by hackers is people who enjoy, I would like to repeat myself and say hacking their computer, but what I really mean is customizing their computer, uh, learning how the guts work, um, modifying stuff, um, installing new stuff, uh, testing new stuff, killing stuff, uh, breaking stuff, fixing stuff again, and the process kind of repeats all of the time. Um, I believe I would fall under this category as well, but I do tend to use multiple computers and some of them really cannot fall under this category. So without taking me into this picture, 
these people, uh, the the second group, I don't think that Omarchi is for them because these people like to customize their computer. Uh, Omarchi is well, it, it's an Arch remix. It's a, a pre-configured Arch. You know, the way DHH imagined it for himself. Uh, and I do believe that he will make it easier for the end user to uh, use it uh, as he imagined the entire configuration. Um, and there is a lot of um, Git activity going on uh, around Omarchi and that's all nice and cool. But as I said, people who really crave for getting their hands dirty, they don't want things to be pre-configured for them. They want to do it themselves. Uh, if we go back to the first group just for a second, these people also can't use stuff like Hyperland and um, whatever the rolling uh, nature of the Arch Linux is, and especially the fact that AUR is uh, included by default uh, in Omarchi, that kind of sucks. Uh, but it, it is a part of their uh, base design. Without AUR, there would be no Omarchi. Uh, it's all about uh, racing and um, eye candy and stuff like that. So the first group really just wants GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, and that's about it, you know. Um, so who is once again Omarchi for? I think nobody. Well, that, that may be a little bit of a stretch because there is always someone who will want to be a part of Arch, by the way, a group, and they may not be able to read uh, the Arch wiki and they may not be able to configure their own Arch Linux. They may not be capable of writing their own Linux, uh, but they do crave to be a part of you know, the human, the, the basic human nature of belonging. So if they, uh, th this is like a third group, if they see a lot of hype around Arch Linux, so they visit this YouTube channel and that YouTube channel and that YouTube channel and everyone is, uh, I was wrong, by the way, I now use Arch. Uh, I have been a long time Arch user, I'm super happy. Uh, I am only using Arch Linux because everything else is not a good fit for me, this is awesome. Uh, and you know, it's a, it's a process that tends to get uh, within your brain and well, if you wish to belong, then you're going to feel alienated, isolated and uh, you will want to be um, finding a way to install Arch and uh, well, you will want Omarchi. You will want Omarchi because it's a it's a 10 minute procedure that will get you a fully riced desktop uh, which your non-technical, non-computer people will be admiring and they will uh, believe that you did this and uh, you will feel awesome about it. Uh, whether or not you will die a little bit inside knowing that you didn't really do that, uh, but you just installed uh, pre-configured packages, I'm going to leave that up to you, you know, but uh, I think a lot of people will want that option for themselves. So Marchi is good for this category of people. Also, I think Marchi is great for uh, being a demo. Th that's it, uh, being a demo of how it could look. Uh, also, I think a lot of new Linux users, um, like le let's call them uh, normies, uh, they do want to be uh, guided into our Linux ecosystem. And for the most part, I tend to uh, drive them towards the distribution, which I personally consider the best fit for them. However, some of these people might not be um, persuaded easily to switch from Windows or Mac to Linux if they feel that it looks the same. And this may be a stupid argument because the, um, the, the, the grand gift of Linux and free software is escaping 
the claws of the uh, big tech and uh, the proprietary lock-in and ecosystem lock-in and um, um, owning your stuff and being able to install whatever you uh, want on computer and the computer doing your bidding and stuff. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. This is the power of Linux. Uh, but some of these people will not actually want that. Uh, as their primary driver to switch from a proprietary operating system they will only want to switch if the uh, third option looks better so for these people I kind of think that Omarchi is good uh, in the same way Zorin is good for new people but for different reasons of uh, crossing to our side and um, the reason why I think this is, as I said, the the the, the racing, the the eye candy, but at the same time, um, this is one of the this is one of the areas where it seems like DHH is doing a really great service to the overall Linux community by doing the marketing for us. He has a huge uh, following, right? So people with uh, a huge following tend to be a really good. Um, uh, marketing machines and uh, nothing uh, would give me more um, warm feelings around my heart than seeing more Linux people uh, incoming uh, asking for help uh, being curious about how uh, we do things how uh, how the, how to become a better Linux user how to do, to make their new um, Linux life uh, better easier uh, you know stuff like that so whether or or not you as a new Linux user uh, rather enjoy eye candy or some kind of stability um, there is always an option for you, for you and while I was a part of the interview the the couple of days back um, you can watch that video I'm going to try to link it above once again um, what I said is that Omarchi feels very much like a leech. I don't know if that's good grammar in English, uh, but basically attaching uh, itself onto the existing effort of Arch developers, uh, which I consider a bit shit uh, if you're going to uh, go through the trouble of calling your uh, product a Linux distribution because uh, Omarchi definitely is not a Linux distribution. You can argue about that uh, how much you want, uh, but in my opinion, this is not a Linux distribution. Uh, however, after I did the interview, someone showed me uh, the video that you have seen uh, in the beginning of this video uh, where DHH said that uh, he actually understands that his product is not a uh, Linux distribution but rather an Arch Remix uh, which is uh, really good, really good. Uh, he kind of went up in my eyes by quite a lot after I have seen him say that uh, simply because you may, um, you may reason that semantics is irrelevant but for me it kind of is relevant because if I, uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to do that, but l let's just pretend if I would put in a lot of effort of mine, let's say uh, five years of my own development uh, worth of time uh, into making a new distribution from scratch, you know, like using the Linux kernel, uh, taking uh, some of the very popular init systems uh, and um, uh, doing the package manager, uh, doing all of the packaging and dependencies and all of the testing and making sure that everything is uh, super compatible and uh, and it works and you know uh, it, it's like thousands of packages. Arch Linux has like 10,000 packages you know, uh, Debian has like 60,000 packages, uh, maybe more and this is a huge undertaking for a uh, real Linux distribution to go through in order to make it uh, usable for the end user and then someone else comes along and just takes everything that I have been doing for five years and calls it a li like puts a little bit of makeup on it and calls it their own Linux distribution um, so this kind of invalidates majority of 
my work and by my i don't mean my i mean i mean debian arch you know stuff like that fedora even but you do you know where i'm heading with this it it feels a little bit insincere uh for example if you go to the web page of linux mint you will see uh, one of their blog posts from uh, a couple of years ago not not that old where they wrote why they went with LMDE, Linux Mint Debian Edition. Uh, they felt like Ubuntu is going in the direction which they will not be able to follow. And by not being able to follow, I think what they meant is, well, they are using Ubuntu and putting a little bit of cinnamon makeup on it. Uh, and calling it mint but at the same time it's not just that what they're doing uh, they are removing the uh, pre-installed uh, snap uh, daemon and which is something that they don't like and approve uh, they are replacing all of the default snap applications with the um, debian uh, packaging versions such as firefox and they are maintaining like i don't know maybe a hundred packages you know so these are some of the very popular packages uh, among the end users so they want to package them in a native way uh, in, um, instead of packaging them uh, as a um, snap what ubuntu is doing so they thought that ubuntu is going to give them harder time over the future course of months or years uh, by switching a lot of stuff to snaps so they will have even more work in repackaging uh, and that's something they cannot afford to do because they are a small team so they wish to have this kind of backup uh, where they check how their design of ubuntu their ubuntu remix which is mint uh, how it stands uh, while being a Debian remix so whether or not it will produce the same result or uh, same enough uh, result and that's how Debian um, Linux Mint Edition came to be so th this is what they do you know and what I was trying to explain with all this uh, is uh, not at all a dig uh, on Mint it's just that they too uh, are unable to create their own distribution so they are doing a remix of someone else's uh, distribution and uh, also Ubuntu wouldn't be Ubuntu if, if there wasn't Debian so you know things are going a little bit in circles here and that's why we have 200 Linux remixes <laughs> you know um, but yeah uh, I think that's going to be it for today's video um, you know if you liked it uh, give it a like uh, if you didn't don't give it a like uh, or click the dislike button uh, once again do follow my channel if you want to see more of these videos uh, and uh, you may want to subscribe like on coffee and stuff like that this gives me a huge boost in confidence that uh, more people would like to hear these kinds of opinions and the technical content that i do and the quiz that i do and the um, uh, sunday learning lessons that uh, i do for all of you guys uh, if nothing else maybe just watch the credits pass me in a couple of seconds from now these are the people who support my channel the most Thank you very much.